I want to speak to you today on deliverance from sin. Um, and of course, one might, some may wonder, well, what sin is? According to John 3 and verse 4, 1 John 3 and verse 4, sin is the transgression of God's law, um, or the trumpeting of God's law. Therefore, um, we need um, some form of deliverance because sin brings death. Romans 3 and verse 23 tells us, I think most of us know this verse very, very well, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. All have sinned. 6.23 of Romans, Romans 6.23, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. We need uh, to have some form of deliverance from this awful plague or the sin that is upon us because sin brings death. It is, you know, consider contracting a, a, a disease. And you go to the doctor because you, you cannot cure it yourself. You go to one that has experience with this disease and the doctor would prescribe a medication for you. Well, the doctor might tell you that this might be very hard on the body, the medication. But so is that disease because without an antidote for the disease, it would probably take your life. And so you go to the doctor to cure that disease. I say to you today, Jesus Christ is the antidote for sin. Because sin is the thing that brings death. And we're not talking about a physical death here. This is the most serious type of death we're talking about. This death is a separation from God. You see, everyone will go through this physical death, whether you believe in Christ or not. Everyone goes through this physical death. But there is a death that really separates us from God. And who wants to have that total separation from God? The only reference I can draw to that is, is the devil. Uh, he said, he knows his day is coming. He believed that day is coming. And for two, three, four, five thousand years, he has to endure the pain of knowing that that awful day is coming upon him. That total separation. He is totally separated from God because he did not repent. If we do not repent, we will not have this deliverance that we're talking about. Jesus is the antidote for sin. And we need to apply Jesus in our lives. You see, um, John 3.16 tells us, For God so loved the world, that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in Him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent His Son not into this world to condemn the world, but that the world through Him might be saved. To you that are getting baptized today, I say to you, the choice is the right one. You've made the right decision accepting Jesus Christ and putting him on in baptism. See, we have the formula. Jesus Christ gave us the formula to come back, to counteract this awful disease, to counteract sin. He gave us a method whereby we must apply. This is, we're not making this up. 
This is what Jesus said. He said in John and Matthew chapter 18 or 28. Turn with me to Matthew chapter 28. Matthew 28 and verse 18 to 20. Again, these are verses we are familiar with. He says, All power is given to me, both in heaven and earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them. And this should, proper translation here should be, Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, we do not use that Trinity form, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. In fact, we know Father is a title, and so Son is also a title, and the Holy Ghost as well. But Jesus is saying, laying down the formula to combat sin, right? He said, go teach all nations, baptizing them. And then he said, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you even unto the end of the world. So this medication, this antidote for sin, is with the church until Jesus Christ comes back. Jesus' church will survive all the difficult times, weak maybe at times, but will survive. And we continue to apply the antidote for sin. It is very straightforward. There is a teaching. See, believing is not enough. Just believing. It's not enough. Jesus said, go teach and baptize all nations. The question is, did the disciples follow his direction? Turn with me to Acts chapter 2. It was the day of Pentecost, verse 37, 38. Peter brought a message that day. And Peter um, talked about Jesus. The one, the crucified one. Saying to Israel that... David prophesied concerning Jesus and not himself. David's sepulchre is still with us today and still is. David's remain is still in the ground because no one ascended into heaven. And Peter go on to say that Israel, let the house of Israel know assuredly in verse 36 that God had made that Jesus whom ye have crucified both Lord and Christ. Now when Israel and the, the, the group that heard that they were responsible, when they heard they were responsible for Jesus' death, the Savior, the Messiah, they asked in verse 37, when they heard it, they were pricked in their hearts and said unto Peter and the rest of the apostles, what shall we do? Notice what Peter said. Repent. Have that godly soul for sin. And be baptized. Exactly as Jesus told them. Peter is repeating exactly what Jesus said. Repent. So he's teaching here. And be baptized. In whose name? The name Jesus Christ for the remission of sin. And he's saying, you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Repentance precedes baptism. And also the Spirit of God that comes upon us after baptism. So one must repent. Remember, um, transgression, um, sin is a transgression of God's law. And so it is incumbent on us to say we're sorry and we are willing to change our lives. God's law is in the word of God and this is we learn how to um, keep God's law in our hearts because the Spirit of God guides us all the time how we ought to conduct ourselves. Imagine if the doctor Going back to the doctor analogy, prescribe this medication for that disease. You start taking it, and then you quit taking it. What will happen? 
the disease will probably come, it will come back. And the doctor will tell you if for some reason you stop taking that medication to if, the, if and that disease come back, it will become very difficult. It, it is harder to reverse it then. And it becomes very difficult to control. Peter said on the day of Pentecost, we are to repent. Turn with me to Romans 16. This is what um, I'm really talking about. If we, if we allow ourselves to fall back, if we did not follow the doctor's prescription, um, we can make our lives very difficult. Turn uh, Romans chapter 6, verse 1. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace me abound? God forbid. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer? Figuratively speaking, if we're dead, we cannot sin. We cannot do anything wrong. We cannot do good. We cannot do bad. Um, baptism is a barrier. And Paul is saying here that we become dead to sin. The next verse saying, Know ye not that so many of us as were baptized into Christ were baptized into his death? Therefore, we are buried with him by baptism into death, that like as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection, knowing this, that the old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, and henceforth we should not serve, serve sin. For he that is dead is free from sin. So we do not practice sin anymore. The former things no longer control us. The former way of life, because we now taking on the Christ-like life. Now, if we be dead with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with Him, knowing that Christ, being raised from the dead, dieth no more; death had no dominion over Him. For he that is dead. Um, Died, died, died unto sin once, but he that liveth, he liveth unto God. Likewise, reckon ye your men, yourselves to be dead indeed unto sin, but alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body, that ye should obey it in the lust thereof. Neither yield your members as instrument of unrighteousness unto sin. But yield yourself unto God as those that are alive from the dead, and your members as instrument of righteousness unto God. So, you see, God has expectation, you know, as many of us do. So is our Heavenly Father. So is our Lord Jesus Christ. He, he expects us now that we we baptize into His death, now that He our, his Spirit is shared with us. God expects us uh, to live that life. Yeah, God does have expectation. Even with choices. See, God expected Adam and Eve to obey Him. He gave them choices, but He expected obedience. We know what happened as a consequence of their disobedience, death came upon them, and here we are, I'm still dealing with their fall. We have a path to follow. Jesus paved that road for us. Jesus, as I said, is the antidote for this problem. And so, when we are baptized, into Christ. This Romans chapter 6, it is known as the baptism chapter. Take a moment and read it and study it. It is encouraging. 
Paul is encouraging the Romans, and so the Word of God is encouraging us not to return to the former life. It would be very difficult to come out. If we're dead, we cannot say. But we are alive because figuratively speaking, we bury that former life in the watery grave and as Christ lived that new life today, so Paul is saying we should walk in newness of life. And our bodies, the, our instruments, as he's saying, whether it's our tongue, our hands, our feet, our eyes, our minds, Paul said in Romans 12 that we should be transformed in the renewing of the mind. The mind has a lot to do with everything that we do in our lives. And so, we, um, our hands, we learn to keep the Sabbath. And, and so, that's one of the teachings. You see, Jesus said to teach and that they may observe to do the things they love. And so, our hands should not be um, used as instruments of unrighteousness. We should learn to keep the Sabbath. Our tongue should be um, used to uh, minister grace, to encourage, to speak a kind word in time of need, to, to correct, uh, to direct, to um, just... So these are instruments. Our feet should um, not be in mischievous things. Um, so all of our instruments, our eyes, should not be in wandering eyes, uh, but always focus on God. Um, so we, we want to be free from sin. We need deliverance. Jesus Christ is the answer. He is the way. He is good enough for me. Uh, we hope and pray that He is good enough for this world. And we know many think that that's not good enough. Um, but for you that are getting baptized today, you've made that choice. You decided to go to that person that can heal you, both physically and spiritually, that can apply that spirit that is able to take you from this awful situation to a life that we are all looking forward to. As Jesus said, eternal life. Colossians um, 3, verse 5. Colossians 3, uh, we read verse 5. We'll read a couple of verses quickly. Chapter 3, verse 5. Modify therefore your members which are upon the earth. Right? Fornication, uncleanness, or inordinate affection, evil concupiscence, covetousness, which is idolatry. So the, the first part of this verse saying to modify your bodies which are upon the earth. And verse 9 is saying, Lie not one to another, seeing that ye have put off the old man with his deeds, and have put on the new man which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him. So, used to lie, used to, you know, tell lies, used to steal. Uh, these things you do no more. Uh, why? Because the old man, the, the, the former life is buried and we are renewed in knowledge after Jesus Christ. Uh, verse 12. Put on therefore as elect of God, holy and beloved, bowels of mercy, kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, forbearing one another, forgiving one another. If any man have a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, so also do ye. And above all these things, put on charity or love, which is a bond of perfectness. And let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to thee which also ye are called in one body, and be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing 
admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. And whatsoever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father by Him. That is leading your members to good things. So our body is used as an instrument that God can work with. Um, we yield it to Him. Uh, it is not our own. We're not our own anymore. Um, going forward, um, you make a commitment to, to follow God and to do what He wants you to do. Uh, many of us have experience with God. Uh, we went through the very same thing that you're going to do today. Uh, we will admonish how we should live this new life. Uh, the path that this new life will take us. Uh, our eyes are set on the kingdom, the new Jerusalem that is coming for all God's people. I want you to read, uh, let's read verse 1 to 4 of the same Colossians chapter 3. If ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Set your affections on things above, not on things on the earth. For ye are dead, and your life is hid with Christ in God. When Christ, who is our life, shall appear, then shall he also appear, then shall he also appear with him in glory. So now that you have been baptized, you've been go through that modification, um, you um, live in the life that God wants you to live, of course your affection would be set on things above. Where else would it be set? You have since then crucified this world with its affection and lust. You have no pleasure in it anymore. That's what you're saying today as you prepare to be baptized. You have no pleasure in this world and this, the life that this world is offered. Mm -hmm. And so this whole life that you once had pleasure in, you're going to lay it down. Your affection is set on things above, not on things of, on the earth. See? See the hope, the faith, the encouragement we have in verse 4? When Christ, who is our life, shall appear, we also shall appear with Him in glory. This body of sin will be no more. We will be given a body compatible to the one Jesus Christ had after His resurrection. Jesus cannot die anymore. He cannot sin anymore. He did not sin when He was here. But because he was in human flesh, it was possible for him to. But he did not. So, as we go forward, our eyes, our affection, our whole being, especially in this day and age, the time that we are living in, it, it seems to me as though we are living in the end time. I am sure you're feeling the same thing as well. The devil really don't want you to make it because he is sentenced to death. He's on death row. And so are his the fallen, fallen angels. They are on death row. There is absolutely no repentance for them. There is hope for every one of us here. We're not at death row. And we should not allow ourselves to go down that path. What we need to do is set our affections and things about it. And when Christ shall come, He will call us. And we will all appear with Him in glory. See you at the full God bless you. Amen.